morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noel McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. That was Asaph Adonai on piano. Thank you, Asaph. What an uh, awesome intro was that? That's called My Heart Will Go On, the theme to the Titanic. Yep. Yep. We have it's a great class. show for you guys today. We got Tales from the Weekend. We got events. We got new programming. We got weather. We got weather. We got weather. <laughs> we got roads report. And of course, if you haven't seen the weather the last couple days, it's been interesting. It's like it yesterday was really great. It was a great yeah. day to go outside, but you didn't know it was a great day to go outside because <laughs> it was overcast and it was a little bit scary. Uh, Saturday, it rained like 10 solid minutes of like hard Hard rain. It was intense. Yeah, the weather has been nice and cool this weekend, which is kind of good because it's August and we've all expecting hot, but we haven't gotten it yet. So why not just stay inside tonight when it rains and uh, enjoy some MCAT programming. Uh -huh, uh, yeah. So if you uh, check out the weather right now, it is currently 46 degrees outside. Um, your high is going to be 76, uh, your low is going to be 48, there's a 40% chance of rain tonight. Uh, Tuesday you have a 60% chance of rain which continues on through the night and then of course uh, the showers lower down through Wednesday and Wednesday night and then Thursday your sunny weather should start coming back for your uh, spring in August. Nice. So pretty much it's spring in August. It really is, it, yeah. It really is. It's, and it's so cold. And it's good for the... Uh, a lore, roaring lion fire. Yeah, that's that's a, one of the really good things about this cool weather is that it puts all of those fires in their place and contains them. Yeah. Um, but I am a little disappointed that it's cold because I really wanted to enjoy my last month of summer. Yeah. But oh well. Well, it's the uh, it, it, it's roaring lion. It's not it lion fire. Roaring lion fire. So the fire is roaring and the and place is like called the lion. roaring lion. I don't know. Because I, th I thought it was a pun. That's why they kept I like thought, putting roaring fire, lion fire. I thought that they called it a roaring lion fire because it just, I don't know. It, the fire's this, roaring. Yeah, and it just like it, shot up in like seconds. Apparently it is, uh, the area is called roaring lion. Okay, that makes sense. So the roaring lion, it's like a kind of like a pun in itself that the fire is roaring and the... It's and then, it, yeah, I just, um, I have never really understood them giving fires names. Or making t-shirts about it. Oh, it's it, usually so. just like uh, the, the place where it's at. Yeah. It's like Cold Creek Fire or um, Blah 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 Fire, um, Sealy Lake Fire, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> blah 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 Fire. Oh yeah, that was a dangerous fire. Thompson <laughs> Falls Fire, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. But Cold Creek or Cherry Cold Creek. Creek. Cherry Creek. Yeah. Yeah. But I do see that you have the roads report up, Scott. What's what's What can we expect? A, a bunch of the same, but of course, I just want to update you guys on what's going on thus far. Um, far in the week of August the 7th, it is uh, Brook Street, the intersection of Old Highway 93 to Pizza Hut. Um, yum. Yum. It, <laughs> it basically stops you right at Pizza Hut. No, no, no. yeah, they okay. did that on purpose. The, the city, well, I guess they put pizza in there because the traffic would, uh, I don't know, I think they just feel bad because it's hard to it's get a Pizza Hut. Yeah, anyways, it's a landmark. It's the, what they purpose. It was like, oh, from the uh, the old Pizza Hut. The old Pizza Hut down <laughs> on old Highway 9 to 3. Across the street from old Mrs. Betty. Yeah, old All Mrs. Right. Betty. She okay. pizza. Okay, yeah, move on. She, no, she makes uh, pizza pot. Anyways, <laughs> the city will start a new sewer main installation, and it will be going on from 9.30 p.m. to um, 6 a.m. So expect delays if you do any kind of night driving around that area. Uh, um, res reserve Brooks to um, 39th Street. They're repaving and it starts uh, today and they continue on through the ninth. So the road will, will remain open but it's restricted to two lanes Mm. So expect delays on reserve. Um, there's 39th Street reserved to Russell and then of course starting on Wednesday uh, through the week uh, the westbound lane will be closed between 7 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. for utility work in preparation of a chip and seal project. Uh, Hillview Way at 23rd to 39th are continuing their construction until November. So that's more continuation. It's like the SID. We talked about this like <laughs> our first year. It was the biggest story. It was like it's they're true. talking about who's going to get what. Okay. And then, of course, uh, South 5th West, and then there's South 6th West, mm -hmm. and the adjacent streets beyond, and they're doing a um, curb and sidewalk upgrade project. So, of course, if you can go down a 6th, or Fifth Street, I, I I caught it. That I got a piece of that. It's really intense. Really, it's like the it's like a single lane, but these are these are one ways. The mm. Sixth and Fifth Street are one yep. ways, and it's right next to the church, right in the base of mm -hmm. the heart of Uptown Missoula, just past the Big Dipper. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it, it's, that is definitely a bit annoying to go on. Yeah, yeah. Um, then yeah. there's. Um, Linda Vista Boulevard, Lower Mill Creek to Jack Drive. They're continuing that one, so there's a big road that's closed, so you really can't turn um, into the residential areas from uh, Lower Miller Creek. 
Um, so, of course, Old Highway 93, there's the post sliding road to McDonald Street. Construction is continuing on the South Reserve Street pedestrian crossing bridge, and they're going to continue this as until it's done. Nice. That's the plan. And you can find out more information about this by logging on to the City of Missoula's website, www.ci.missoula.mt.us. And if you can't remember that, you just type in City of Missoula in any search engine, um, like Google, and you can find it. Um, but of course, if you want to learn more information about our morning show, you can log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. There you see a nice picture of us with Darko Buderats and his concert there, uh, the Missoula Symphony Orchestra's concert is this Sunday. Moving on, um, there's uh, Facebook. You can like us on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter. You can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook. And to find out more information, you can just check us out on MCAT.org. Yes, right there. And of course, you can always <laughs> subscribe to us on YouTube. We're, we're constantly live streaming all sorts of city meetings and more now. So it's uh, it's a big thing. Um, I'm doing city council tonight. Yes. So I'm going to be running the uh, the switcher and all the electronic stuff. That'd be exciting. So I'll be uh, yeah, I'll be running cameras. <laughs> I'll be sitting there for maybe two and a half to five hours, depending upon what's going on. I'll have to check the agenda just to double check. But it's usually... Uh, Usually about 80% devoted to public comment. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, really hey, Noel, is. can you help me? I think I can. Yes. Okay, so Scott was telling me before the show, he was like, Noel, I want you to open this can for me on the show. And I was like, that's really weird, Scott. He was like, yeah, but I want to see your reaction. So Scott wants to see our reaction to this can. Okay, we're about to open it. I guess it's really intense. Okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is intense. <laughs> <laughs> nice, I like that. <laughs> yeah, just, I was expecting a snake right? to pop to out. just like <laughs> explode? Yeah. Well, it didn't have enough pressure in it for it to explode, but that, yeah, that's kind of intense, that whole snap thing. But I think there is, I think that like, you know there are those like sounds that are really um, appealing, and I think that cracking open a can is one of those sounds that are appealing. Well, you yeah. know what else is appealing, Noel? Some new programming on Amcat. <laughs> Great, Scott! <laughs> Segway! Anyways, so we have a bunch of brand new programming happening tonight and tomorrow night, and it's following, um, the anti-trafficking that's going on, um, some of the uh, stuff that Montana is doing that other states are being like, uh huh, we should do that. Exactly. Um, and also there's the Southwest Asia Conference Part 12. <laughs> <laughs> just like, <laughs> just like 10, 1, 2, Part 12. It's a, ever, it's a forever ongoing series Never about ending. that stuff. And they're talking that's about true. terrorism in the modern world. <laughs> Yeah, so without further ado, here is what you guys, here's a little teaser of what you guys can expect on MCAT uh, tonight and tomorrow night. And when we come back, we'll have an event with Noel and more with uh, ASAP as well. There are many um, uh, journalist, journalist circles and projects in Mexico that work online with, the, with this kind of new um, the type of journalism. Mm? We are not are the only one. Pero ellos tienen sus propios medios. But but they but they have like their own their own means their own uh, ways of doing that. Otra pregunta. Yeah. Uh, sorry, another question. Treatment modality called trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy, which is right now the leading modality to treat victims of trauma, both children and adults. And we actually are one of the states in the country where other states look at us and say, how did you guys do that? Um, it's very expensive training. It's highly technical training. You need to be licensed to attend it. And I can tell you how we did that. We did it the way we do everything else in Montana is we got together, we found some partners and said, geez, it costs $4,000 every time we send someone out of state to this training, so let's get a trainer and bring them Conflict here. It is having a major impact on Europe and the rest of the world now that he's gonna have to be somehow dealt with. Um, in terms of what is best for the Syrian people, I mean, I can tell you what I would like to see, how realistic this is, I don't know. I mean, for me, the regime has always created this binary. And from day one, they sought to essentially say, it's either us or this very extreme, horrible alternative. That it's either ISIS or Al-Qaeda or Muslim Brother, whatever it is that they, the bogeyman. Hello, you guys. We are back and we've got some events. So this is what's happening in your community today. 
Um, we're starting at 11.30 a.m. because usually in the morning on Mondays they have a bunch of kids camps that you really have to pre-register for. So I don't want to tease you guys with those camps that you probably can't even get into. So we're starting at 11.30 over at the Missoula Public Library at the kids' table. So this is a free lunch for ages 18 years and younger. And it's actually really good. It's really good food. And then they'll have an activity, have an art activity or an activity at noon. Over at Montgomery Distillery, they've got their Moscow, Moscow Monday at noon, which is where they give back to the Missoula community. A dollar from each cocktail sold goes to a different nonprofit in the Missoula, Montana area. Um, though we do have one camp you guys could probably still get into today if you wanted to. It's their trampoline camp over at Roots Acro Sports Center. It starts at 1230. Um, and it looks like, so 1230 to 330 is a half day. And you know, it doesn't say, I don't have uh, how, what pricing is, but from what I believe, I think it's like 90 bucks, something like that. And walk-in is, you can walk in, but space is not guaranteed, like Scott said. <laughs> Uh, over at the Missoula Senior Center, they've got their Beginner's Brush Up Bridge Group that's at 1 o'clock today. And then also at 1 is their Duplicate Bridge that's with the Garden City Duplicate Bridge Club. Um, that is over on Stockyard Road. And then over at the Missoula Public Library, they've got computer electronics in their makerspace starting at 3. Uh, you can learn how to use some of their equipment or work on a project of your choice. And then over at Missoula Aging Services, who always has a lot of great products and wonderful services for our community, our older community. They do a lot of great things. And so they've got their caregiver support group, starts at four o'clock today. Um, and so that is for family members of an older adult or person with a disability. You can call 728-7682 for more information or uh, just to, yeah, just chat. So the base at the Warehouse Mall is hosting Wordplay. It starts at 4 o'clock. This is uh, poetic games, uh, word expansion, and free writing through sharing and feeding off of other people, which I think is great. Yeah. At the Top Out Lounge, we've got Raising the Dead. We have live recorded shows of the Grateful Dead from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. So they've got those awesome live recorded shows. And then they'll have an happy hour and trivia, I do believe, too. Service industry night is at Plonk at 6, so if you work in the service industry, you could tell them that and they'll give you a menu that has exclusive deals on drinks and appetizers, which is pretty, it makes it worthwhile. It, it's yeah. kind of like, you can't really lie about it because <laughs> it works like, uh, it, looks, it, it works like gay dar, it's like service industry dar. It's like, <laughs> where it's, if you, you have, you're just like, um, you're fed up. Yeah. It's kind of has those like, you're not, at that point you're not a people person, you're more just like, yeah, you you, you're kind of like, you know, PTSD, but with service industry. <laughs> I think everyone goes through that at, at some point. Yeah, definitely. I've been in the service industry for five years now, and there, I definitely remember like, uh, like maybe like a year, maybe not a year, maybe like six months of where I just like did not care about customers. I just didn't care about talking to them, you know? Because mostly I'm very chatty and talking and I really like people yeah. and I like to hear stories and I'm like truly interested. But for a good six months there, I was just like, I don't even care. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I care again. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I like it especially because if like, if you uh, know, I mean, sometimes if I, if you know somebody who works in the service industry and you go there, that does that gives them an excuse not to treat you like a customer. Yeah. Like they're just like, oh hey hey, what do we want? Like, oh really? Thanks. It's true. It's true. It's, it's it's even worse. It's like if they don't know you, they're nice to you. But if they yeah. do know you, they're just like, yeah. they don't care. It's unfortunate because I've had some bad service in Missoula lately. It, like like when downtown. I've been out, I'm I'm it's sorry. Bad. I mean like I don't want to call it all this stuff, but I've had some. It's it's trickling down. It really is. And like you know I I, like I don't want to name names or name. Places. Places. Well, and I've worked in the service industry for five years, and I pride myself on customer service and like being a great, you know, great to my customers. And so, having really bad service, I'm just like, uh, what are you guys doing? Yeah, <laughs> just I mean, not paying attention. And, and you know, when a person's not being genuine too, mm -hmm. it's just like there's some mm -hmm. places where they're just like, they're uh, not even trying. Yeah, just like would rather. They're giving it the old millennial try. Yeah, basically, as I like to call it, and it's. It's just terrible. Mm -hmm. I yeah. agree. But we're going to move on because we've got only a couple more events. Yeah, no more break. service industry bashing. So, uh, over at the Missoula Public Library is uh, their beginning word class. It starts at 6. Um, and so this will, uh, it's an intro to, you know, Microsoft Word Processing. So you can learn how to create a document, manipulate the text and fonts, and use templates. Registration is required. You can call 721-2665, and it's from 6 to 7 in the computer classroom. And then my last event for Monday is uh, over at Shakespeare and Company. It's Peter McCoy. It's called Radical Micology. 
and is sharing, so he's going to be reading from his new book, which is an exploration of local mycology and mushroom cultivation. That sounds pretty great. Yeah, so that's what's going on on Monday. We're switching gears now over to Musical Notes with Asaf Adonai. Mother's prayers follow you. That small sign hangs under the name of the historic homeless shelter in history on today's Musical Notes. The New Testament says, inasmuch as you have done it unto the least of these, our guest has done it to the least of these. We're talking about the Pacific Garden Mission, known to the world as the Old Lighthouse, and there it is on the screen. The Pacific Garden Mission is a homeless shelter in the South Loop section of Chicago, Illinois, founded in 1877 by Colonel George Clark and his wife Sarah and it's known to the world as the Old Lighthouse. Now look at my notes here. Um, the Pacific Garden Mission is the oldest continuously operating rescue mission in the United States. It serves 60,000 meals a year for those in need, and the Chicago Bulls and the ZTE host Thanksgiving dinners every year. They have hosted these dinners for 13 consecutive years to help men and women and children visiting the mission and helping those who are in need. And do we, if we have that video, let's show them in action sure. here. Now, you won't be able to hear anything, so I'll just narrate. Um, of course, when you look at this version of the mission, it's more high tech compared to when they first came into existence because they didn't have all that technology back in 1877 that we do today. They probably didn't have the elaborate dishwashers and things like that to the degree we have today. But this mission has stood the test of time. It has helped people throughout time since 1877. Very consistent. They, they um, give a nice safe bunk at night and they give counseling to people who have either psychological or mental issues or abuse issues and of course if you're a veteran they help veterans they serve children they they just reach out to the community even though they're in Chicago I'm sure there are people outside of Chicago that go to this mission too and my final words I want to talk about this mission here um, in 1950 they began a radio broadcast called Unshackled and it's it's kind of similar to the old vaudevillian theater uh, plays, you know, where they would play all that organ music and stuff. The old Charlie Chaplin movies. Well, they this is what they do, but the only difference is they do true life stories of people that have come through the mission. They have had they've had this program for 30 consecutive years without a single rerun and it's translated into 15 languages around the world. So I think that's pretty impressive. And finally, Unshackled is considering doing my own life story, yours truly. So if I get this opportunity to be on Unshackled, I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. But for now, this old lighthouse has just been a beacon of hope and it's helped a lot of people around the world. And I'm gonna stop on that note. Mm -hmm. Nice. Right nice. Thank you very much, Asa. So you, sure. you say that you're on a waiting list for I'm a on a waiting spot? list to um, be being considered to be on Unshackled. Cool. <laughs> yeah. what, so, is, what, what is the, usually the themes of all their uh, radio programs? It depends. Programs? Like it, they do stories of people who, who may have come from foster homes that were abused or it could be anything. And I had submitted my own life story and they contacted me. Now, I don't know if I'll make the final cut, but it's nice to know that I'm being considered. Yeah. You know, to try to help people with my own experiences. But this mission, it, it's a pretty incredible mission. They have high tech radio equipment to do these radio broadcasts mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's really awesome. 30 years without a single rerun. Yeah, that's cool. Pretty amazing. That is amazing. And is it every day? No, it's every week. It comes on our time, Once a week? Um, 9.30 Montana time every Sunday night. Oh, very cool. Nice. Well, that's neat. So um, I did the art walk last Friday, oh, yeah. and I saw Noelle walking across the street, just like doing her thing with my friends. Uh, with your friends, yeah. and then like and then, like I crossed the street a little early for sure, and you're just like yeah, nah, yeah, nah, yeah. Because nah, nah, nah. Scott, well, I mean, <laughs> there's no traffic. I'll just just go. I know it's really funny, and I always cross the street when there's no like when the hand is still at stop. If there's no traffic, like I I just go. Yeah. Yeah, but it was just funny to see like me be across the street being a good wholesome. <laughs> Pedestrian, while Scott was being a devil pedestrian, and I was just like, "Ah, Scott, what are you doing?" 
know. He lives life on the edge. Yeah, I live life on the edge. And I thought of a comeback of what you said to me. As you were walking away. As I was walking away. And you were like, no. I was like, darn it. Was yeah. Like, <laughs> that would have been so good. <laughs> yeah, that would have been awesome. But I'm not going to say it. Anyways. No, no. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, here's, uh, oh, like the whole, it's not about pedestrians, it's about art. And that was part of the art walk, so I got around and checked out some of the art. And I, and I checked this art, art out at the Missoula Art Museum, and this is on the second floor in a little tiny um, corner space that's up there. And it's right next to the little library. And this is the um, sketchbook one, which is uh, Field Notes. That's the theme of this, and this is by uh, Karen McAllister. And I suggest you guys check this out. It'll end October 1st, so it's gonna be there for quite quite a while. But you know, don't procrastinate. Yeah. Because <laughs> it'll, uh, it'll be over, kind of like the Clay Studio was over last week. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, here's the art clip, and when we come back, we'll have your rest, the rest of your events for the next two days. <laughs> I know that was a close one. <laughs> okay, so now this is what's going on in your community on Tuesday. Um, the Western Montana Fair starts tomorrow, and that'll be out at the fairgrounds. So it goes the 9th until I think it just goes all week long for a good week. So check that out. Get on your rides. Eat your bad fair food. Um, over at the Roxy Theater, they've been showing children's movies on Tuesdays mornings. So they've got Kiki's Delivery Service tomorrow at 11. And it is, um, so it was a 1989 Japanese animated fantasy film that uh, everyone was very, very popular. It was all awesome. these, yeah, and I've watched it, Scott's watched it, and all these movies that they are playing at the Roxy are a lot of like these really great anime movies that were made in the 80s and 90s. And they just have wonderful stories, and they're a lot of fun. So Kiki's Delivery Service is great. It's 11 a.m. at the Roxy. We've got our kids' activities at the Fort Missoula, at Historical Museum at Fort Missoula, starting at 11 a.m., so from 11 to 12 and 3 to 4 all summer long, they got lots of activities for kids. Over at Frenchtown Pond State Park, they've got their paddleboard lessons. It starts at 11, so 11 to 12.30, 1 to 2.30. All you have to do is bring $45, and you can uh, learn how to paddleboard. They'll teach you. Over at the Public Library, they've got a Creating Art Journals Part 2. Um, so bring a blank composition book to class. They'll be in their makerspace. Open at ages 13 and up. It is limited to six people, so you can call 721-2665. Over at the Peace Farm, they've got Farmer Field Day, so you can go over there and hear their lecture about farming. And they're talking about growing weed-free onions. Boo! So that'll be at the Peace Farm at 2 o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> Scott like we likes weeds and his onions. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone would like it. <laughs> over at the public library, there's open hours in the makerspace at 3.30. You can work on a project of your choice or learn how to use their equipment. Elephant Toothpaste is at the Children's Museum of Missoula, also at 3.30. Um, and so it's just like a really fun science experiment. It looks like toothpaste squeezed out of a tube, but the foam is so big, it's got to be elephant toothpaste. Totally. <laughs> 
Yoga Warriors is at the Learning Center of Red Willow at 4 o'clock. This is a specific yoga program designed for veterans and their caregivers. Um, and this is been found to lower anxiety and help with sleeping problems. Over at McCormick Park, they've got Fulf in the Parks. It starts at 5.30. Um, and you can, it's from 5.30 to 7.30. The park changes each week, so it'll be McCormick Park tomorrow night. The Missoula Farmer's Market is at the Red X's tomorrow night at 5.30. And then we've got our Community Creative Writing Workshop at the Public Library at 6. It's an open, drop-in environment focused on the Creative Writing Workshop in their makerspace. And then we have Yoga in the Parks, and that will be held at McLeod Park at 6 o'clock. Picking circles at the Top Hat Lounge also at 6. This is for bluegrass-oriented musicians to go out and jam out. There's traditional Irish music at the Imagination Brewing Company at 6 o'clock. At 6.30 is System Check over at the Missoula Public Library. This is the official gamers club for ages 19 and under. Over at the Good Food Store, they've got a cooking class. It's called Chinese Street Food. So uh, one of the chefs from Plonk will be teaching you guys for $35 how to make Chinese street food. They'll be making Chinese crepes with scallions, cilantro, and chili sauce. Uh, steamed buns with barbecue pork, scallion pancakes, glutinous rice balls, and Chinese milk tea. And this next event, I just love this event. I haven't had a chance to go to it, but I just think it's great. It's called Bugs and Brews, and it's at the Missoula Butterfly House, and they do this often. And what it is, it's, um, so it's $5, you get two complimentary beers, and then you get to listen to a speaker present on something about animals and insects, mostly insects. And so it's about Maria Sibi, it's like Sibylla Marion, who is a pioneering naturalist and artist. And her investigations of insect metamorphosis at the dawn of scientific revolution. So you'll learn all about her and her adventures in 1699 to do field work. That sounds pretty cool. So she obviously is not alive, but knows her stuff. And the speaker obviously knows her stuff too. It sounds cool. So that'll be at the Missoula Insectarium at 6.30. And then my last event for our Tuesday and our next two days is our African dance class at the Missoula Senior Center. It's only $10 drop-in, $35 for four classes, and uh, yeah, all ages and levels are welcome. So as always, you guys, check out MissoulaEvents.net, the University of Montana website, the Missoulian and the Independent for more events in your community. Yeah. But of course, uh, it is Monday, and every Monday I always have a tale from the week. You do. And this theme is uh, just a little introduction, and the, the, the title of this um, tale from the week is called The Infeminate Frank. And all I can think of is that I haven't had a hot dog in like eight years. <laughs> well, you know, I probably have the fake hot dog, you know, with the soy yeah. and whatever. Yeah. But I'm just trying to get this camera just set up. Fake hot dogs are really gross, you guys. Here I am. Okay, good. <laughs> the camera's on me now. Now I have an L. <laughs> you can call me Yes L. <laughs> yeah. What? Anyways, that's a stupid joke. Anyways. That was funny stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's start this thing. Okay. Now. The story centers around Frank, who in this story is an infem infeminate weirdo based on how we view things as normal in the realm of social creatures such as human beings. Um, any more explanation that would not add to the story, blah, blah, blah. Just so, so just bear with me. Uh, uh, this tale is about the infeminate Frank. Just clearing that up. Okay. Frank was raised by a single mother who played as both mother and father figure to her son, who has never had a male presence longer than outside his school life. Frank would always enjoy things like sewing, painting his nails with his mother, and watching Hallmark and Lifetime movies with his mom as well. <laughs> this isn't a story about the young infeminate Frank. This is a story about grown-up infeminate Frank. I feel as though that explaining this only makes the character less endearing as I keep on it uh, talking this way. So I'll just jump. Up. I'll just jump ahead. You know, like you know, just <laughs> okay. So, anyways, uh, he has a humble accountant working job. Uh, he's on the fourth floor of a building that leases offices to many different um, companies as well. Frank was tasked with giving the new guy a tour of the office. This new guy was cut out of marble by high fashion magazine dipped in gold. It's safe to say um, that he had classic and modern day looks in spades. Ooh. Yep. <laughs> 
Frank showed the new guy the ins and out of the office and how things worked, as the new guy would pass the other cubicles and let's say all the ladies, especially the married ones, would pop their heads and check on uh, the printer. Yeah, that's right, the printer they would check on. Um, <laughs> so Frank and the new guy started chatting up and the new guy laughs and touches Frank's shoulder and complimenting on this or that. Uh, <laughs> Frank never thought much of this until later in the story, which I'll get to in a second. The new guy invites Frank and some of the coworkers uh, to, uh, to drinks after work for some team building, you know, that kind of thing, just gotta get to know each other. And of course, more of the other cubicles decided to invite themselves to this little outing. So Frank and the new guy, and then, uh, and the new guy were like two peas in a pod. The other coworkers began to talk and laugh about Frank and the new guy, much to Frank's ignorance. The new guy got the joke right away, but Frank was in rare form as many of their coworkers were beginning to fade. So the new guys invite Frank to go clubbing. <laughs> so they go clubbing. Yeah. And then of course, um, having fun you two. And don't go too hard tonight, fellas, where we you know, basically went straight over Frank's head. You know, those kind of <laughs> things that people like would say to him. You know, like, like it was just constant. Anyways, but you at home, and uh, here in the studio should know that what's going to happen, it's, uh, it's going to be pretty funny, actually, yeah. And then also a little bit heartwarming as well. <laughs> Frank and the new guy were going towards um, two, a two-story building that more than enough neon lights to fill an entire red light district. Um, Frank doesn't care, and he thinks this place seems neat. Um, the door is open, and the lights are flashing, and all Frank can see is a well-lit DJ spinning the latest music and the bass from the speakers massaging Frank's heart. As the new guy and Frank make their way to the bar, Frank notices the overall lack of women around him and sees a lot of men dressed down and very ripped. <laughs> the new guy looked fairly average uh, to some of the guys in the club. Frank made a note of this to the new guy and he laughed and touched Frank's shoulder again. But this time, <laughs> played with his elbow on the way out. Ooh. Anyway. He touched his elbow too much? Yeah, touched his elbow. It's like, it like this. Yeah. It's like touch and then tickle. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was terrible. Sounds terrible. Yeah, anyways. Uh, of course, Frank <laughs> flashed back to the day in the office and remembered how the new guy was laughing at everything he said, staring at him for long periods of time. Um, he knew that he had to explain to this man that he was not into that sort of thing. But how? It was too loud in the club, um, and, and by the time Frank could get the new guy to settle down, his song for the tenth time would come on, and they had to go dance <laughs> uh, next to semi-clothed men and their fully clothed girlfriends. <laughs> That's how you know. <laughs> <laughs> Frank did what any socially awkward person did. He ran, and he got out of there as fast as possible. Uh, the next day at the office was awkward to say the least. Um, and the new guy came up to Frank and explained that how he didn't know any better and he shouldn't have come on too strong. But of course, Frank was like taken aback. How, how was his initial reaction of running away any indication that he was not into that sort of thing? So Frank simply explained to the new guy that he wasn't into that kind of thing. And, you know, he hopes all he is all well and everything's good. But of course, you know, that sort of thing didn't bode well in the office. Unfortunately, um, it, um, his sexuality was uh, now up to argument. Of course, people already had their ideas of the infeminate Frank, but now things have changed forever, you know? You have the idea of somebody and you're just like, oh, you know, he's just like this or that. And then of course, after the events of this night with uh, the new guy, everyone's like now arguing about his sexuality. And like a small town, everyone in the office knew about the new guy and Frank. And like any rumors that get started, they cannot be stopped. They can get replaced over time, but they really just can't be stopped. Uh, Frank got a new job. Uh, you know, people were the same, you know, but Frank was a little more jaded in letting people know his softer, infeminate side. Of course, the moral of this story is, you can be true to yourself, but that doesn't mean people know the truth. Or 
people just suck and should just mind their own business. <laughs> <laughs> I like the second one. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yep. Well, nice, Scott. Yep. <laughs> Good it's kind of like it was kind of rough in the middle part, but I kind of brought it back. <laughs> I could I could have stayed. I should have just kind of stuck with the script, but I just kind of got the idea. But of course, everyone like at some that. point, and I do take it from definitely some personal experiences. Not like the whole work thing. You know, I don't yeah. really care what other people think. You know, it's my own. Yeah. Whatever. As I'm friends with anybody who wants to be friends with me. Exactly. That's how I feel too. Yeah. yeah. Which I think is right. Cool. So that was Tales from the Weekend. I like the that. That Frank. was good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. little Frank. Well, I hope he like, gets a girlfriend that enjoys his infeminate side. <laughs> 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 nice, Scott. I like that. <laughs> no. But we hope that you guys enjoyed that too. Nope. Tales from the Weekend airs Mondays, uh, every Monday. Yep. Nope. It, it, it basically wraps up the show yep. every Monday. And exactly. of course, uh, Wednesday, you can expect a new uh, segment of Hallmark Ribble Mark where mm -hmm. I try to fool these guys into thinking whether or not it's a real Hallmark original movie or it's not. And Fridays, if we get a chance, we like to show videos from our children's programs. Yes. And of course, I did want to bring out a card that one of our kids wrote us oh. as well. It is um, from from a call. Oh. Do you wanna um do you wanna like uh like just kinda entertain him for a little bit while I, mean, while I go run out and just grab it because it's only gonna take like five sure. seconds to grab yeah. it. Alright, yeah. I'm just gonna go grab it because they wrote a like a little note. Did yeah. you see it? Yeah, I hung it up on the yeah, I didn't actually see it, but I wanna like share it with Yeah, our it's audience. that purple card mm -hmm. with the butterfly. Yeah, mm -hmm. I hung it up. Yeah, I saw it. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. run and get it. Okay. It's really cute, you guys. All of our summer camp kids were so adorable and they were so sweet. Um, the teen crowd was a little older. There are a couple teens that just like didn't listen at all. So that's a little hard, but for the most part. All okay, right. this little card. This little card it's that so one of our cute. kids made. It's wonderful. It's really nice. And uh, this is what it said. It was a construction paper. It's very uh, personal, for sure. It says, <laughs> Sorry, that was a fake cough. Anyways, dear MCAT, thank you for letting me be in this camp. You are my favorite camp, so thank you so much. She has five O's, yep. so much. Love McCall, P.S. Thank you so much. Aw, little muffin. They're so <laughs> sweet, I love them. Yep. It's nice to be able to like have at least some sort of influence on their lives. Even I wouldn't say influence. Like, I would say more like, you know, appreciation. Appreciation. Because you or don't really like realize how much they appreciate it until yeah. maybe like a year or so yeah. later. Even if they're like the worst kid ever. Like some kids are just like little turds. Like yeah. kids can be turds, yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone can be, like everyone can be turds. Everyone yeah. can be good, everyone can be bad. Yep. But you don't know. A lot of times these kids are just like, you know, they're just like... It's true. Just yeah. like one one emotion at a time. Yep. Not like multiple emotions. It's just like <laughs> I can't handle it. <laughs> but it's it's interesting. It's uh you know like I I hear ki from kids like maybe years later and I remember them because they were terrible, and they're just like it was the best time of my life. And you're like I hated you. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> you never think really want to tell them. That. <laughs> so like they're gonna see this anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they will not watch this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they won't. It's fine. Yeah, cool. cool. Yeah. Yep. But, but thanks, uh, thanks yeah. McCall for Thank this you, McCall, lovely little, uh, little note little that you wrote sweetie, for us. Yeah. And if you want to find out more information about our morning show, log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice you made you write it out twice. You can like us on the Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula. Missoula Community Access Television. Also at a Twitter. You can uh, follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook. And to find out more information, just check us out at MCAT.org. And be sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. It's Wake Up Missoula and MCAT television where you can see all sorts of wonderful programming and of course join us this Wednesday where we have Kim Dudick um, she's running for house district 99 and she's gonna be talking about uh, anti-trafficking yep yep all these yep so we'll have her on this Wednesday uh, along with Hallmark Bull Mark and a whole bunch of wonderful other stuff happening on Wednesday as well even if we have to make it up <laughs> um, so without further ado uh, for Wake Up Missoula I'm Scott Ramp and for Wake Up Missoula my name is Noel McVoy here's Asaf Adonai <laughs>